This is In Boot Camp, Episode 3, Rock, Paper, Scissors, on Saturday, February 2nd, 2019, and with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersett. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB3. It's pretty good. Did you survive the cold? Uh, I think uh, most of me survived the cold. Yeah. Um, There's probably a little bit of frostbite of me somewhere outside. Yeah. In the Twin Cities metro area, it did get down to negative 58 Fahrenheit, which in, is cold. In, in most places in the world, that's very cold. Yeah. Regardless if you're in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Yeah. No, like, um, it's so cold that you shouldn't be outside. It isn't In it's, school learning. Uh, you might have to code this little mini problem one day, but... Isn't there a, a temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius that are the same? Negative 40. Negative 40. So it's basically, if you can get to negative 40, if you can feel that in either temperature, that's how cold it was, but 10 degrees worse. Yeah. Which is still a couple hundred Kelvin. Uh, yeah, so it's tropical as far as Kelvin's concerned. Is that how it works? It is. Hmm. But no, my uh, class got canceled on Tuesday night because of the extreme cold. And so was the, the Monday class also canceled? Or was it just your No, class? their Wednesday class was. Okay. Um, so, and we just had class remote and just, if any of my classmates are listening, please invest in a USB mic or, or a microphone of any, any type or just mute yourself. Well, that would be good too. So what, uh, what did you use to do your remote class? Uh, we used zoom box or zoom. Okay. I can't remember what it is. Yep. Zoom. Yeah. 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 I've, uh, I've used that. So in, in a lot of corporate settings, you know, you'll be, you'll be, uh, saddled with stuck with what's a, what's a word that has the connotation of. Being stuck with something you totally dislike and is useless. Married to. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> but so Zoom does support uh, the Linux. Yeah. They so, gave me a dev installer and it was great. So Zoom is great and most people can use it and it's cool. D- doesn't matter what operating system you're on. And you can use it in a browser without installing any additional content, which is cool. Pretty sure. Like 40% sure. Mm, well, I must have installed it for fun. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, I think you can only receive a call in the browser. Like you can't like well, start and all the features. Like I yeah. had the screencast. Like it, it wasn't right. just one. It wasn't stuck to window. Right, right. Which is something hey, I like. That sounds funny. Yeah, Hangouts. Um. Uh, so, so in the corporate world, you're often married to Skype or um, uh, what? What's the other one that people like to use? Uh, FaceTime. No, no, no. Use FaceTime. No, not FaceTime. I don't know what it's called, but it's awful. But mostly Skype is the worst one. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, it's also one of the first, though, so that's kind of cool. No, it's because Microsoft ruined it. Oh, yes. Yes. Somebody's bitter. Not not really. So let's talk about week three. Yeah, today so was the last day. What was last week? So so last week, if I recall correctly, it was all about CSS. And then... Yeah, a little bit of bootstrap um, yeah. and just CSS and learning, you know, IDs, classes, um, so multiple your, classes. So your last big project thus far has been about, you know, making like a little portfolio website. Um, yep. You had to use some uh, sophisticated floating techniques to get that to lay out to look right. And guess what? What? Homework two is to undo it at all. With? Well, so we are making two different versions of the basic profile now. Mm-hmm. One of them is going to just use CSS and it is going to use the media query. And so it'll it, be responsive. Yes. Um. So they get they give you the three pixel things like um five seventy six uh seven fifty something and yeah. then nine whatever sixty or something. Um. Uh, it yeah. was also the breaks of the small, medium, and large columns in the Bootstrap oh, grids. That's pretty stuff. convenient. Yeah. And that was the other one. Uh, do it again in grid. Yep. That's a really cool exercise because it it sucks to have to recode something you've already coded. Like for sure, it does suck. But it's also cool because all of the content's already been written. You don't have to have the creative cognitive overhead. You can just oh, have yeah. the go do work uh, learning experience, which is cool. Uh, and also, Bootstrap is pretty well known, used widely. Good to know. Yes, they actually boast being very, very well used on the Bootstrap homepage. I bet they would like you to believe that. Yes, because it's true. Um, so you started JavaScript this week. Yep. Uh, so. Uh, week one, HTML. Week two, CSS. Week three, JavaScript. I like Whoa, basic. That is... The three fundamentals in the first three weeks. That that feels like the first three years of my life. I mean, since I was 12. 12, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. I feel like I was doing those same three things for years. 
Um, so JavaScript is a big, kind of a big deal. Yeah, and um, good start, rough start, medium start. Yeah, that sounds medium. So we started Thursday night with the JavaScript, and I get it. It's slow. We're learning all the new things. Um, and I have some programming background. I, I know how to do stuff. I know what ifs and else is are. And, and, and for so. additional perspective on that, in addition to Matt's personal programming background, being interested in tech and stuff, and then also taking some computer science classes in high school and a little bit in college, maybe a little bit. Like I don't even know. Uh, Matt also decided to do like read about react and learn some javascript before the class even started yeah and he was doing just fine then because um you can't know too much no you can't know too much and it's also good to know what your prospective class should strive to offer you and if it offers you less than for example a ten dollar udemy course that's not a good sign well um that brad travesty's uh udemy courses are 10 bucks and they're fantastic they're like or 21 they're hours and they're pretty good and uh, you're supporting a nice guy yeah i agree and it, it, he he enjoys doing it and he actually answers questions which is pretty cool yeah the 11 grand that went to the university of minnesota probably went to who knows what um it's impossible all i know is it doesn't go to the stadium because that's it's paid for now yes it is paid for i help thanks i'm glad you enjoy yeah. it for five years you paid into that so yeah mm -hmm. two two hundred fifty dollars uh uh some mess no it's per calendar year. yeah It'd be hilarious when uh <sighs> they rebuild it Ooh, i hope um so what what do you start with in your boot camp about javascript so do you start with like functions variables or if statements what what do you got uh just ifs just bars and everything else we're not doing latin const yet okay um they haven't even mentioned it um and plus They've never even mentioned the primitives yet, and they just basically they want you to just use number, string, and boolean. The only three that are out there. And arrays are collections or lists. Do you feel like you're maybe your professor is a Java guy? No, no, no. My my main guy Your main is, guy is a JavaScript guy. Yeah, he's a he's but a React the, guy. Maybe the guy who you talked to today. Yeah. Um I'm gonna guess maybe he is. Because if, if somebody's calling a JavaScript array a collection it, he's older it feels java ish uh but no um so i won't have to see this professor again for two weeks well that's nice um so i'll so, be ranting about him in week five because they, they alternate right they alternate on saturdays yeah. and we're all in one big horde so so you you covered uh, a little bit about boolean strings and numbers so did you talk about floats at all no, 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 no. They're no. they're trying to keep it super. No, super. no, no floating point numbers. No decimals. And basically, the pacing was pretty terrible today. Mm -hmm. It was we're spending hours and hours and hours on loops mm -hmm. in a four hour class, and then in the last twenty minutes, all right, everyone, you got to learn how to, you got to figure out on your own how to do math dot random dot floor, and you got to figure out all this, and you have to um make it all in twenty minutes. Goodbye. Yeah, that it is tough. Um, you know what I would say about that is: so, do you feel like your Saturday classes are more of a workshop and less of a lecture, or is it? Well, they're all kind of workshoppy, and that's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. um, is this today's pacing was terrible? Yeah. See, I wonder. I wonder if the. I wonder if the original intent was for the the Saturday classes to be more, you know. Like, use what you've learned through the week and go, let's talk about it as a group and do some activities. And maybe they turned it into, over time, more of a lecture. Fifteen weeks from now, it may be like that. Because yeah. they they have to... Everyone's come into this classroom at different levels. Right. And so these first couple of weeks, I presume, just have to be slow and have to get everyone on the same page. Everyone has to have the same fundamentals. And then once we start getting into it and there's less to learn each week and there's more to do, mm -hmm. then maybe Saturday will be different. Yeah, more work time. Because it's, it's a four-hour class. Right, exactly. And I think that's one of the benefits of having people together, especially when it's the group of 60, like you have some mm -hmm. more people to talk to. That's also nice. More people fighting over outlets. Oh, is that a problem there? Yeah. Everyone's got an old laptop. Yeah. Well, Everyone. You know, power. I mean, even a MacBook Pro would suffer from power loss. Well, a guy in front of me had a solution to that. Um, he I is, I can't remember where he works, but he his whatever sent him here to go do stuff. He comes to class with two. Oh. 
Yeah, two, keeps two, one in his bag until it runs two out. MacBook yeah. Pros. Two MacBook Pros. Wow, that's <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, double the battery. Double the battery, although double the uh, strike. Complete, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's weird. So you had a little project today. I heard it was about rock paper scissors, a classic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, can you tell me about your little uh, rock paper scissors? Well, I'll tell you, I did it wrong in his eyes. In the um, professor. Yeah, eyes. he wanted us to, like. He said, okay, you got 20 minutes to do this, work in teams of four, um, and do all the yada, 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 and we want you to all use on up key, or on up whatever, and all these other things, and I'm like, oh, you have 20 minutes, I'm already checked out, don't want to be here, you want us to do this, you don't want us to use document that, right, all right, we're logging everything to the console, and we're just going to use regular prompt boxes, and it's going to run forever, there's no way to break the while well true. So, so you were telling me that he wanted you to use document dot write. Did not. Did not. Okay. But what did he want you to output it with? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, do you want the readme? Uh, maybe later. Okay. I'm I'm in a podcast right now. You're in a podcast right now. Yeah, I'm in a podcast right now. Um, so so I would say it's hard. Like I can imagine most of your class. You know, this is their second day, like second class day with JavaScript. Yeah. I think it's hard. Like, loops are the point. Like, did you do if statements already? Yeah, we did ifs and... Um, ifs and loops? No, no, loops were just today. Okay. So I think I think it's... When you get to ifs and loops, and you start using them on your own for the first time to solve a problem, that's when programming can sort of make or break you, because that's when you actually have to think about providing logic in a structured format to do something and accomplish something. And if you can't see that a loop is a conduit to that, you can't make that connection. Yeah. Um, and so I know it can be a struggle and 20 minutes is not enough time. Like it's just, it's kind of yeah annoying to even be asked for, uh, uh, even any kind of producible at that level in just 20 minutes. But, um, yeah, so I kind of blew him off a little bit and just did my own thing. Yeah. But i just, I, I didn't want to go home with it unsolved. Right. Mine works. It's just not what he wanted. I can play rock, paper, scissors with myself for eternity. Because you can't break the truth. And so, and so when you're when you're like me, and you and you you get asked in AP Computer Science to make rock paper scissors, you go crazy, and then you start making these little en- enhancements. So you like make random, and you make a slightly better heuristic, and then you make a good one, and then some guy walks in asleep and totally just blows your program away with the actual better solution. Yeah, yeah, that's happened. But you can also take that frustration and go make the war game, for example, because it's all the same tech. You know, it's a loop. And then another loop, and then some if statement. Mm-hmm. So you had a syntax error. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. I got I got pretty frustrated and blown away and pissed off all at the same time. We had a, we were given a zip file that was just you know an HTML thing, and it had in the body tag a sc- empty script tag, and we were supposed to write some JavaScript and uh, the typeless language and everything else. And we're supposed to make a little for loop that went over an array. The array was already given to us. So we just had to iterate over an array and console log it. Mm-hmm. Piece of cake. So it Int be... i equals zero. Int i less than the length of the array. I plus plus. Like, you know, I've done it a million times. Oh, wait, there's no int. No int in JavaScript. No int in JavaScript. Oh. But it's just, when you get, I mean, what, you've done C, C plus plus, Java. What's the difference in, in a for loop? The syntax is identical. Oh, basically identical, yeah. Yes. Like, the, these typed languages, I got so used to just typing out. Yep. You know? yep. it's, 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 it's muscle memory for me at this point. Yeah. And then just, oh, crap. Let's let I equal zero. And, you know, it's funny. Like, you mentioned that I've coded in C and Java. Like, Java's like... And you're Rust. You, you're very you're really Rusty. In, in Rust, they don't really have those for loops. Like, you can use them, but you, they don't make... They don't... They tell you not to. It's too Java E for Rust people. <laughs> we use four ins exclusively. Exactly. How did you know? That's intuitive. Yes, you exactly. Can't use four E or yeah. Yeah. So um they use four ranges actually in Rust, but that's the same. Uh so it, it's funny though, in C, I remember in school for some reason, and I and I must have done it the wrong way first, and then or I must have done it in a way that I thought was wrong and it produced some error, but it might not even have been related. So I tried to do, you know, int i equals zero and then i less than whatever and i plus plus. Mm-hmm. But for some reason that wasn't good enough for me. And so I guess I just thought like 
whatever happened with the syntax error of the seg fault, I moved the int i equals zero above the for loop, and then just had the first segment empty. That work? Oh yeah, that works fine. You can have your your in, very your counter declaration empty. That's fine. But I don't know why I did that anymore in retrospect, and it's weird. So there are su- certain like superstitions you can develop when you don't actually know what you're doing. Eh. So it's good to follow the course material and not to totally make stuff up, but also totally just make stuff up. That's good too. I mean, uh, he's not my real professor. He's he doesn't get to give me a grade and stuff. And plus, my professor doesn't even get to do that. Yeah, it's TA the, is the TAs everything. that do everything. And um, got the first homework back, and I am a straight A student so far. Very nice. Out of one. Well, so, yeah. Well, Tuesday projects, twos do, and um. So, do you um, like when do you think the first JavaScript project will be? Probably uh, a couple of weeks. Yeah. No, we'll we'll get it on Tuesday. Okay. Because we've always gotten projects on Tuesdays, and they've always been due Tuesday. Okay, so it's probably except a week, for last one week long. Well, the first week was two weeks, but yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, have so up. much to do in the first week. Yes, yes, I agree. I mean, I spent a lot of time talking about how not to get parking tickets on campus. Um, it's just like there's some administrative stuff they we, have to do the so first day. So we are talking about the University of Minnesota, where every other road is a death trap, and every other other road is clogged with students, and every third, fourth, and fifth road... Corn or cows. It's corn or cows, or a no parking zone. Yeah. Yeah. They want money. Yes. Oh, and for those not familiar with campus, because why would you be, uh, the Minnesota State Fairgrounds borders it on one side, and there is a gigantic parking lot that is not used the majority of the year. Only during the State Fair, the weeks before and the weeks right after, is that parking lot used. Can't use it, because... The university can't get your 60 bucks a month. No, why can't you use it, though? Uh, the fenced off. Oh, is it? The, the, the is chain. It act- is chain. It actually? Is okay, it? I didn't know. Well, that. if I, dr- I mean, if I drive over the median, well, yeah. I can park there. Yeah, I know. I didn't know it was actually fenced off, though. I, yeah. um, I haven't seen it. Um, so, uh, so, so JavaScript for the next week, though, probably, right? Oh, yeah. At yeah, least. Yeah. We, we've had two full class periods on JavaScript. So where do, where do you think you go from here? So you've done variables, some ifs, some loops. What's next? Um, just... Functions Honing skills oh, probably. I, mean, I hope. I mean, yeah. Functions. Functions are used. I don't know. If they're not telling you about Latin cons today, spooky. Not even a hint about it. It's spooky. Um. So I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll annotate the spookiness with some discussions that we even had internally. So what what do we want people to know? Do we want people to? They don't know wrong yet. They don't you know can wrong. Just teach yet. them right. And, and and so that's kind of what I arg- argued. So what do we want people to know when they come in? Do we want them to know the historical landscape? Or do we just want them to know good practices today for them to be effective now? And then they can learn historical intrigue as they go on in their career. And that's where that's where I am. Like, a person doesn't need to know all of the history. They don't need to know about VAR. VAR isn't good. It's bad now. So let's not tell them. And if they see VAR, they might ask their their, their JavaScript lead or... They might just ask their friend, or they could just, I don't know, maybe Google it. You know what they really should do? What should they do? They should duck it. <laughs> duck it. With duck, duck, go. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I, I would argue it's okay to not learn old stuff first. It's fine. Embrace it. So, the answer is jQuery. 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 That's really useful, I think, um, because it, it, it allows you to start making little applications in the browser, and you can actually start doing real stuff. So that's really cool. That'll be fun. Yep. Are you excited for jQuery? Oh, I'm so excited for jQuery. Okay. That's good, then. Uh, I think that's everything, then. Yeah. Uh, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and, of course, on my website, com. And, in fact, as of this recording today, which will be in the past for you listeners in the future, that's how this time thing works, by the way, I will also be at the... University of Minnesota, just like Matt just was, but I will be there for Mini Hack. Oh yes, the thing you don't even know about yet. No, I know a little bit about it, but I. I What's the theme? Yeah, see, we don't get to know that until we get there. Um, so I will not be participating as a entrant or competitor. I'll be participating as a mentor. Nice mentor, and uh, that'll be a little bit of fun. Uh, so I'm just gonna just walk up the street here and take the train and. So that'll be fun. I'm I'm helping both days, so today and tomorrow, and that'll be pretty fun. And where can we find you on the internet? You could find me uh, 
all over the place and especially on the GitHub, where you can find all the homeworks I've been referencing. I, in my repositories that are all public, the readme files are there with the instructions and you can also find the show notes somewhere on the link on the Nexus website. This is a great plug. I can see you're wincing over there as I'm not perfectly segueing this. Uh, I would say that you can find my wincing at thenexus.tv slash IV3. And show notes below. Yeah. Which there won't be many of because we don't have any links. So Yeah. Uh, oh, well. Link to the, the GitHub where you talk about the homework. Listen, to, listen to the show to find oh. out what we talk about. Yeah. Isn't and, that the uh, solution? That is the solution. Yes. Um, and so I will tell you... Uh, I won't even tell you about Patreon, where you can support us at patreon.com slash TV. I won't even tell you about it, because I don't want to. And that's the show. That's just, that's it. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.